Hey guys, this is John Carnell from the Genesis Cloud Developer Engagement Team, and I'm here today to do a dev drop for January 2023. The topic for today's dev drop is going to be how to set up the Genesis Cloud CXS code provider with the Terraform CDK. So what is the Terraform CDK? Uh, the Terraform CDK is a tool that was developed by HashiCorp, uh, modeled around the AWS CDK tool that allows you to basically define Terraform projects using uh, a programming language. So rather than going out and defining your Terraform project using HCL or JSON, you can actually use your uh, favorite programming language to go and define objects and things like Python, Java, C Sharp, Go, and TypeScript. So uh, this idea for this dev job came from a, a customer forum post who was having some problems getting the Terraform CDK set up and working with our Genesis Cloud provider. So I thought it'd be really co a good idea to put together just a high level overview, show you how to install the tool, show you how to set up the, uh, to bring in the Genesis Cloud uh, uh, CXS code provider, and then maybe create a few objects. Now, this is not meant to be a comprehensive overview of the CDK. It's really meant to be just dip your toes into the water and see what's going on. So before we begin, there's a couple of prerequisites that you're going to need to have in order to install the CDK. Um, one, you're going to have to use Node.js, which means you have to have Node.js installed on your machine. Uh, since the sample project language we're going to work in is TypeScript, you're going to have to have TypeScript installed on your machine. And you're also going to have to have Terra Terraform installed on your machine. I think this is a really important point to make that when you're using the Terraform CDK, you're not going out and basically just being able to write uh, Terraform commands uh, using TypeScript and just doing anything you want with them. It literally is saying, I'm setting up my Terraform project with a backing state, executing it, but I'm able to define my objects in my specific language. So it's not just, it's not a general purpose programming tool where I can build whatever I want and I'm just using these libraries to go out and interact with what I'm working on. So let's go ahead and first go and install the Terraform um, uh, CDK. Uh, so to do that, we're just gonna do an NPM install here, NPM install. And it's basically gonna pull down all of the required packages and get everything set up. Now. When you're using Terraform and you're using Terraform uh, in the more traditional manner, you use Terraform CLI to go and interact and carry out your tasks like deploying your Terraform stack or destroying it or doing a plan and so on and so forth. Uh, with the CDK, you're gonna use a different command line tool. You're gonna use a CDK TF command line tool. And so once we install that CDK uh, TF, we should be able to go out and you can see several commands that look very familiar to what we've done in Terraform. Uh, we have a, an initialization for initting a project. We have the CDK TF deploy. This would be the equivalent of the Terraform deploy, CDK TF uh, destroy, equivalent of the CDK destroy. So let's go out and um, let's go out and actually get everything set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first create a project we want to host our direct uh, uh, a directory we want to host our project in and so I'm going to create a directory called build queue and I'm going to change to it. Now when we run the terraform init command we have to make sure that we are operating out of an empty directory otherwise you'll get an error. So we're going to go out we've changed to our build queue and we're going to run CDK TF init with several different parameters. The first parameter is we're passing in dash dash template equals TypeScript. That's telling the CDK TF that we want to generate language bindings for TypeScript. If we want to do Python, we would pass in a template of Python. And then we're passing in dash dash local, which tells the CDK TF that we're going to use a local backing state to maintain our Terraform state. So if you think about your Terraform projects, you either define a remote backend uh, or you define a local backing state. And that's where all of your objects, uh, the state of your objects are going to be defined and they're gonna be compared against your targeted cloud environment. So uh, we need to have that here. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define the providers that we want in the project. Now you can add providers later on using the CDK TF provider add command. But right now, right off the bat, I'm gonna start with a project that's going to be using the uh, Genesis Cloud CXS code provider. So let's go ahead and run this. 
And when we run it, it's going to ask me a couple of questions. It's going to ask me what my project name is going to be. It's going to ask me a description for the project. Do I want to import from an existing Terraform project, which you can actually do. You can take your Terraform HCL project that you already have out there and you can basically uh, tell the CDKTF on an init to suck all of that content in and start managing it. Managing it. And then do you want to report any bugs? So once this all runs, what we should see then, and we'll let this uh, complete, is we should now see a somewhat familiar directory structure if you're a TypeScript developer, right? Uh, this should be pretty familiar, right? We've got a main.ts, which we'll get into in a moment, but this is gonna be the entry point into our TypeScript application. We have a package.json that's gonna allow us to add additional Node.js libraries and de dev dependencies if we wanna work within it. We have a tsconfig.json object, which is gonna allow us to set up and configure um, our TypeScript uh, project. Now, in addition to that, there might be a couple of files out here that you really are, are like, what are these? Uh, one of them is a cdk.tf.json file. So if you think about like a tsconfig.json tells the uh, TypeScript compiler how to behave and how to act, the cdk.tf.json is the mechanism in which you can tell the CDK, what providers, what modules you're gonna use and any additional uh, flags you wanna set associated with the CDK TF. For most of my day-to-day -day work, I am not gonna to directly touch this file. Instead, I'm going to be using the CDK TF command and it will go and insert all the values in there and do the work in there. But I'm showing it to you guys because you might wonder what the heck is this about? The other interesting uh, directory out here is the .gen directory. Now, if you remember when we initialized our project, we went and said, we're gonna use the Genesis Cloud Provider. Well, what the CDK.tf does then is it goes out and generates all of these wrappers around the uh, Terraform resources and data sources associated with the provider you're gonna use. Now you can use more than one provider. Uh, we can have projects with Genesis Cloud and AWS and Azure and all that stuff in here. But if you go out here, you can see that we have all the resources that are part of the Genesis Cloud uh, Terraform provider, and we have all the data sources. So let's go ahead and go back and actually go and start looking at setting up our project. So we're gonna go back to our main.ts. And our main.ts is going to basically define something called the stack. And you'll see it here as the class, my stack extends Terraform stack. And the easiest way to think about this is the stack is what is defining the resources that are gonna be deployed using Terraform. So in our case, we've got a stack out here and we're going to go out and we're going to start doing uh, some simple work. We're gonna create a queue. We're gonna define the Genesis cloud provider. And so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to go out and import a couple of different project definitions. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to bring them over here. And basically, this is how I am going to tell my uh, main.ts that I'm going to want to use the Genesis Cloud Provider. This would be the equivalent of the provider block inside of the Terraform HCL, and I'm going to use a routing queue object. This would be the equivalent in our Terraform HCL of saying I want to basically, or I'm going to be using a Genesis Cloud underscore routing underscore queue resource. Now to actually set these up, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a provider. And I'm gonna grab my snippet of code over here and inside of the constructor, I'm going to define my provider, and this is, again, the equivalent of defining a provider block in the Terraform HCL. And just like in our Terraform HCL, we can pass in parameters. We can pass in, like, we want to turn on SDK debugging, or we want to turn on our, uh, pass in our credentials for being used within uh, the uh, Genesis Cloud provider. In this particular case, I'm not turning on the SDK debugging, and all of my environment variables are set for my Genesis Cloud ID and credentials, so I don't need to put anything in here. So we need to have the provider set up. If we don't have the provider set up, the code's not gonna work. Now let's go ahead and set up an actual route and queue object. And the cool thing is, is once you kind of get the handle of um, the objects and their names, it's pretty much just like defining it in HCL, except you're using your program language. So out here, I'm gonna define a routing queue. This is, again, would be the equivalent of the Genesis Cloud underscore routing underscore queue resource. 
and every object running with it that was generated by the CDK TF for my provider is going to always have as the first part of its constructor the scope. And the scope is what's going to basically tie this object to this stack. Now, the second thing we're going to have out here is the name of the resource. So just like in our Terraform resource, when you have a resource block, you define the type of resource you're going to use, and then you're going to give it a unique name. In this case, it's my simple CDK queue. We're going to define any parameters. So we want to call the queue my simple CDK queue, and I want to call um, and give it a description. And this would be equivalent of setting these attributes in HCL for a queue. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's go out here, and we're going to issue a CDK TF command. Now, I could just go, if I just want to check the overall syntax and make sure that essentially the code compiles, I can do a CDK TF synth. And this is basically going to just do an initial code generation and check that all the code uh, is compiled, and it's going to generate my uh, Terraform code. All right. Now, you'll notice out here that there's a CDK um, dot out. This is the output. Remember how I said the CDK basically needs Terraform because what it's going to do is it's going to take all your object definitions that you have in here and generate them into a JSON file format that can then just be used by Terraform to go out and execute my command. So you see out here that you're like, okay, I've got my state file. I've got my... Uh, Q object that I'm going to build. This is basically the JSON representation of the Q object. And then I'm going to go ahead and execute it. So let's actually deploy it. So to deploy, I'm going to do a CDK TF deploy. And just like the Terraform command, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to auto approve it. And it's again going to go through the synthesizing process because it's going to take that uh, TypeScript code and the provider, it's going to run it to generate that underlying common JSON format, and then it's going to use Terraform to go out and basically deploy it. And if you go out here and look now, you can actually see you've got a terraform.lock.hcl, you've got your Terraform directory, right? Um, so in here is the backing state for your particular project. So your Terraform TF state, and just like a regular Terraform project, you don't want to mess with the backing state. And frankly, you don't want to use a local backing state if this is going to be used for an actual project. So now let's go out. We've gone out. We've defined a simple queue. Let's go out and do the equivalent. We're going to do a CDK TF destroy. And we're going to go ahead and destroy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and do one other thing, which is to add an export. Okay, so we're going out. We're destroying our object. And it should be good to go in just a moment. So doing an export is often a common task that people use our Terraform provider. They kind of sit there and they can use it for backing things up or if they want to be able to look at what all the definitions are. So let's go out. We're going to add another class called the TF export. And then let's go and set up the TF export object. So we're going to do our queue definitions, and then we're going to go out, and we're going to set up just like in our Terraform HCL where we're using the export resource, we're going to have a TF export. We're going to define a directory with a relative path, and we're going to say we only want the routing queue objects. We want to include a state file, and we want to export as HCL. So now when we go out and run this, we're going to go ahead and we should see our exported information. Hold on, let me control C that. It's going to fail. All right, because I forgot to save it. And now we're going to go ahead and deploy. Because originally I had added the object, I had the definition out there, but I didn't save it. Okay, so we're going out, we're running the export. I was just waiting because it's actually going out and exporting all my my information. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, where the heck did the export go? I mean, inside of here, I said dot slash Genesis Cloud slash export. Well, everything that would go to standard out or would be written out by the project is going to go out to the CDK TF dot out directory. 
So if we go out here and we look under stacks, we'll see under our build queue stack, we now have a Genesis Cloud directory with an export directory. And then here is our export at Terraform file. All right, so here's all of the different objects that I have in my organization and they've been represented as ACL. So like I said, this really wasn't meant to be a deep dive on um, the Terraform CDK. It was really meant to just show you how to get this thing set up and start playing with it. Uh, if I have to say anything closing this out, just be really careful as you go out here and making assumptions about what you can and can't do with the Terraform CDK. Like I said, you're going to get out there, you're going to get all excited. You're going to be like, man, this is incredible. I can go out and I can, you know, basically use these uh, Terraform provider objects and I can use them in my code and I can, you know, and I can build like a web service around it or command line tool. And it really isn't. It is really about taking Terraform out of HCL and JSON and just allowing you to define your Terraform objects instead inside of code. Now, one of the cool things about this is you can basically use this to uh, write your code, for instance, and then query the Terraform objects to get their IDs and maybe do some downstream publications if you have to do some scripting uh, for your DevOps pipeline. But just be aware of that. So thanks, everybody, for sitting through this. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And I, as always, I look forward uh, to hearing from you.